Morning Lighthouse, Facebook, YouTube family. It's an honor to stand before you. I'm Dr. Leon McCray. Some call me Apostle Leon McCray. But I'm, I'm glad to be here. Glad to stand before you. It's an honor to represent the King of Kings. Amen? Um, I just want to share with you a couple things. You know we are, are still going through some will call it a crisis, but I've stopped using that word for the coronavirus. I just call it a situation or a storm that we're in. <coughs> My brother told me I need to turn the mic on. Hallelujah. Uh, I think the mic is on now. But the, if I had to give a title to this message, it would be Truth, Truth to Reveal After the Coronavirus Storm. I mean, know that this too shall pass. This too shall surely pass. And so we need some troops to deal with after this coronavirus storm. And so when I look at what's going on with the coronavirus, and I, I try to stay abreast of what's going on with the church and stay abreast with uh, what's going on in the community, uh, the effects of the storm you know, you're looking at job losses and you're looking at people taking pay cuts and, you know, receiving unemployment benefits. There are so many people unemployed. You know, people are really challenged with, they thought they would be in a position to retire, but now they can't retire. Some people have lost 40% of their 401ks, loss of businesses. Some people, their businesses are crippled right now can't afford to pay rent. Some people can't afford to pay their mortgages. They're at risk of losing their homes. That's their abode, the place where they'll stay and take care of their family. Some people are at risk of losing their life savings, at risk of losing their businesses. Some of the businesses that's been around for 30 years and now they're going out of business. Now, there are individuals right now that they have had to tell, and this last week, they've had to tell their, their sons and their daughters that, you know, we'll no longer be able to keep your own payroll. There's not enough money coming in to sustain the business and sustain the families. With tears in their eyes, they have to relay that information. You know, some have thought they had positioned themselves to have legacy wealth to take care of their children and grandchildren, and, and now it's like a poof, and that is gone. And I, and I say all that to say this, you know, sometimes we have our plans, but they don't always work out like we think that they're going to work out. But with that being said, there is something else. There is a truth. You know, those are some facts that I just talked about, but there is truth. And that's what I want to talk to you about, rebuilding after the coronavirus storm. You know, we, have made, we may have made some mistakes. I know I've surely made mistakes. And there are consequences for us making mistakes. Maybe we could have planned a little bit better. Maybe we could have did this, or maybe we could have done that. But regardless of that, I still want you to be able to look through the storm. And I want you to see to the other side of this storm. If you made mistakes, just ask the Lord to forgive you, turn around, and move in a different direction. Amen? Amen. But as we are looking to rebuild after the storm, I really want you to turn with me, and I've pretty much turned there, to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And we want to start, start at verse 24, Matthew 7, 24. And it reads, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. You need to underline that, on the rock. Verse 25, the rain came and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice it's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, 
and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So as you are looking to rebuild, we want to make sure that you are building on a rock foundation, the rock foundation, and, it, and being built on the rock of truth. Jesus is the rock, and he is also the truth. Amen. I don't want you to blame God for this. Why? Because the Bible says in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And say this on his job. But God says, I come that, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Why? Because I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now that is the truth. Some of the things that I mentioned earlier are facts. But what God's word says, God's words give us truth. And so I have to be, believe, and I want you to believe and strongly consider not so much the facts, but the truth. Because truth can overrule facts. Amen. You see, Jesus offered us his life, the abundant life, because he's our good shepherd. Now to understand this, I believe that you have to understand God's original intent for you and I before the foundation of the world. And that comes out of Genesis, which I preach out quite, quite a bit because that's the, that's the foundation, that's where it all began. But Genesis 1.26 says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. So we find out from that scripture that God has made us in our image, in his image, He's made us in his likeness, and God says, I've given you dominion over everything that I've created. And in verse 28, it goes on to say, and God blessed them, meaning if God blessed you, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. So God has given some truth. To us, why? Because he's made the declaration, he's made the decrees. He said, I, you are blessed. Amen. I want you to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish and subdue the earth. Yes. Those are our truths. So in that, I want you to look beyond and through the storm over to the other side because the storm shall pass. Yes. This coronavirus situation shall pass. Pass. And there are going to be winners and losers, however, and there are going to be some that will get bailed out as a result of this situation. And that might be a fact, but how do you know God's word is true? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before I go on, let me talk about this truth. Let me define that for a minute. Let me define fact and truth. Now, fact is, is that Thing that is indisputably the case used in discussing the significance of something that is the case. Now that's from a natural perspective. However, truth is defined. The Bible says that truth is that which is consistent with the mind, will, character, glory, and the being of God. Even more to the point, truth is the self-expression of God because the definition of truth flows from God. Truth is theological. Truth is also ontological, which is a fancy way of saying it is a way that things really are. Reality is what it is because God declares it and made it so. Therefore, God is the author, source, and the determiner, the governor and arbiter, ultimate standard, and final judge of all truth. God's word is true. So no matter what we're going through, sons, kingdom sons and kingdom daughters, we got to understand that God's word is true. Therefore, yeah. regardless of the, what situation we find ourselves in or temporarily, we have to stand on the truth of Scripture. Amen? And, and let me continue. You know, as, as I was thinking about this message and as I was meditating on this message, these are some things that came to mind. Because we all find ourselves challenged 
with this coronavirus situation, as we're challenged throughout our life. But how many know that despite the challenge, there is still truth and there are facts? Amen. Now, I want, to, I, I want you to consider this. Because, you know, in the midst of this, our, our mindset has to be channeled in the right direction. We have to look at things from the prism of what God's word says about this situation that we're going through and that we find ourselves in. Okay, but, you know, previously, and, and I struggled with this myself, and I know others that struggle with this. We have been told things all of our life, and those things might be fact, okay? We've been told things like this. I was born in poverty, and I still that's still a stronghold in my family. A lot of people have been taught that. I was brought up by a single parent. Those are challenges that some of us face. My parents were alcoholics and drug addicts. My dad was in and out of jail. You've heard this. I was, I was born in a family of black folks. I was born black, in other words. Or I was born Hispanic or I was considered white trash, or I, my family was considered to be trailer trash. My family lived in the project or the ghettos. The impact of race, racism and prejudice, prejudice were major factors in my family. My mom and dad never finished high school. My mom and dad never finished high school. My family never knew how to manage money. My family never understood business or capitalism. I'm not talking just myself, but these are things that people, I've heard this over the years from people that I've interacted with. I've heard these things on TV and people are describing their situations. Yeah. My family was financially illiterate. A strong work ethic was never a part of my upbringing, some would say. Receiving an inheritance has never been a part of my family's background. Those can be facts in your life, but they don't have to be received through the prism of truth. Amen. You see, these hindrances, we don't have to receive them. And I would encourage you to receive the truth of Scripture. In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way. So, you know, some look at this coronavirus situation and they look at what they're going through and they're calling out for somebody other than the Christ. They might be calling out for Buddha, Muhammad, and Joseph Smith, and all these other individuals, Harry Christian. Some even calling out for Mary. But I'm telling you, Jesus said there is no other way. Jesus is the only way. Amen. Therefore, if you're looking for which way to go, Jesus says, I am the way. If you're searching for truth, Jesus says, I am the truth. If you want to experience life and life more abundantly, Jesus is the life and he offers it to us with abundance. Amen. Everything that Jesus offered, know this, sons and daughters of Christ, that it's received by faith. Why? Because that's a principle of God that we have to receive that by faith. Yes. Hebrews 11, 6 puts it this way. And without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yes. You know, we serve, um, I, 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 I put a good God, but we serve a great and awesome God. Yes. He's a big okay. God. And this does not surprise him, does not shock him. God, by a truth, will get us to the other side yes. of this situation. And so, when we look at going through it or to the other side of this storm with the truth of God, then that means that we have to understand the truth of what God's word says. What is the truth regarding this situation that we're going through? What is the truth regarding this challenge? This is the truth. 
that we, you and I, have the victory because the resurrected Christ and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, which is the power source. It's the dunamis. It's the dynamite to propel us to the other side. Yes, hallelujah. We have the word of God on the inside of us, and the word of God stands. Stand therefore on the word of God. If God is for us, then who can be against us? That's a truth. Yes. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthened us. That's a truth. No weapon formed against us will by any means prosper. Greater is he, Christ, that lives within us than he that is in the world. We can do, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. You know, there was something that was said uh, by my, my brother um, in intercessory prayer this morning, Brother Anthony. He said, you know, I, I feel a strength. Amen. And what he was really uh, feeling was the power of the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's the strength of the believer. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are, are, are truths. Now, you know, when, I, when, I, when I'm studying uh, for this message, um, and you know, and I, you can't deny this coronavirus is a real challenge. It is a storm. There's nothing fake about this. It's, it's real. Yes. Okay? But when I, when I think about challenging situations, I think about Joseph. Because I like studying the life of Joseph. Now, Joseph was one that God gave a dream. But in the dream, he didn't give him all the details. Amen. God has given many of you dreams and visions. I teach on vision and purpose quite a bit. But that doesn't mean you're not going to go through a coronavirus type situation or a coronavirus storm. Amen. Yeah. So Joseph was part, uh, even though he had the dream, he was part of a, a dysfunctional family. His brothers hated, hated him. You know, sometimes uh, we go through situations where people hate us. There was a murderous plot planned against his life by his family members, his brothers. He was thrown in a hole and left for dead, despite his dream and purpose and vision that God had given him. He was sold into captivity by family members. He was falsely accused of adultery, spent several years in a foreign jail. He was in a land and culture far removed from God's promises. And you know, going through this coronavirus situation, you know, it seems like, Lord, you know, you said I would be doing this. You said I would be over here. You said I would be over there. But how, how many know that despite that, God's word is truth. Amen. And God would get us through this thing. Amen. Amen. And so when you look at everything that's going on, you might have went through some dysfunctional uh, things in your family, some hatred, some treachery, uh, wickedness and abuse. But most of us can't really say that we went into the same like situation as a Joseph. But, and God favored him and brought him through. In every situation, he came out on top. Amen. No matter whether he was in the hole, came out of the hole. In slavery, came out of slavery. In part of his house, came out on top, running the house. In jail, came out running the jail. Okay? And even when he made it into the palace, God elevated him to second in command. Somebody say, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Yes. Luke 18, 27 says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. That tells me that that is a powerful truth. So I challenge you to receive the word of God as truth by faith. It's all done by faith. Pursue God's word and purpose for your life. Those are keys. Those are nuggets of how you get to the other side of this coronavirus situation, that's nuggets and keys to how you see through it and see to the other side by the truth of God's word. Amen. Develop a stick to determination for victory despite this storm. Amen. In other words, Lord, you've given me a plan, a vision, and a purpose 
I'm going to stick to it, and I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to get to the other side. Why? Because your word is true. No part of what you've said to me is not going to come to pass. It will, and it shall come to pass. Walk in the abundant life. Give and teach others what God has taught you. Amen. And that's what I'm doing now. I, you know, experientially, I know what God can do. I mean, I have my own testimony. It's not a testimony of what I read or what someone has said to me. God has given me a testimony. And I'm encouraged. So encourage someone else. You're going to see them in the marketplace. You're going to see them in the grocery store. They're scared. They don't know what to do. Why? Because they don't have a relationship with a big God. Amen. With an awesome God. With a loving God. With a powerful God. With a magnificent God. God holds the mountains and yes. the hills in the palm of his hand. Is yes. that God? He's an awesome God that we serve. We need to tell others and encourage them. Yes. Lead them to Christ. This is the moment. Yes. This is the moment. You see, we all have facts that we deal with on a daily basis. But we must walk in the truth yes. by faith. Hallelujah. How, Pastor? I can hear you. How, how do we do that, Pastor? You know, because I, as I said before, there are some that you know, have lost their job. There are some in terrible situations. They are hungry. They are all those kind of things. How do you do it, Pastor? Number one, move towards your vision and purpose or your miracle, even if you haven't figured it all out. At the next step, continue to acknowledge God, and he will surely give you direction. Yes. Do what you can do, in other words. God, number two, God will meet you at your point of faith. Your faith and action will release the supernatural. Do those things that you can do and expect God to do the rest. Yes. If, it, if you could do it all, there would be no need for God. But God does expect you to do what you can do. Amen? Amen? Amen. So Amen. take that first step and do those things that he's called you to do. And when you need to, make, to take the next step, then acknowledge God and God will give you the direction to, make, to take the next step. Yes. Number three, believe in the word of the Lord. Whatever God promised you, he can and will perform it. Number four, we are fully authorized by the Lord Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak and act in his name, to exercise the kind of dominion he exercised, and to be an agent of his kingdom on the earth. Thy kingdom come on earth even as it is in heaven. We, we are called to bring the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Amen? Amen? Number five, in everything that we do, let us pursue wisdom. What does wisdom say about the ill issue or the challenge that we're facing? What does wisdom say about it? Allow wisdom to seek deep within your heart with all diligence. So we are to pursue wisdom in everything that we do. Godly wisdom. Man has his own wisdom, but we have to pursue the truth, the wisdom of God. So that's true. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just say this as a side note. The principles of God work. Yes. Work the principles of God. But that's truth. Yes. Hallelujah. And number seven, the borrower is slave to the lender. You know, I said, Lord, how does this fit? How does this fit? The borrower is slave to the lender. Yet we can borrow for a house or a business as we are led of the Lord. That's what I call good debt or bad debt. And I hear some of you saying right now, what the Bible says, don't borrow, don't borrow. But God said, uh, uh, when he, through uh, Elijah, when he talked to the, uh, to, the, to the young lady, he said, borrow some bases, borrow not a few. So, I mean, you have to uh, uh, speak the word of truth in context. What is God telling you? Okay, God told her to borrow not a few. Hallelujah. And that was the start of a business that would take care of her, her son, and to the next generation. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. And so, oh my goodness, my time is just winding up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I've shared with you some biblical truths with you to rebuild after this storm. So what I want you to do, I, I really want you to visualize 
what you're going through, I want you to see through it, and I want you to see to the other side of this stormy situation, because this too shall pass. And my prayer for you is this, that you end up, after this storm, in a better situation than you when you began this storm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe me, the word of God works. Work the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, my name is Apostle Dr. Leon McCray. And it's been a pleasure sharing with you. Hallelujah. I love you so much. I do wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. We serve a great and awesome God. Yes. If you want prayer or you want to contact me or the church, you can contact me at Leon at LeonMcCray.com. That's Leon at Leon McCray, M C C R A Y dot com. If you want to donate or if you want to pay your tithes and offers, you can do that by way of cash out. It is dollar sign lighthouse M I N. Dollar sign lighthouse M I N. And if you're on, because you know, we're, we're on Facebook, go ahead and like that if you like what I presented to you. And if you're on Luke, uh, YouTube, go ahead and like that, share it with someone. And I encourage you, because I, I want to stay in contact with you, go ahead and push that subscribe button and the bell, because, hey, when I put out stuff, I want it to automatically come to you. Well, I thank you for your time, and I really appreciate you allowing me to share with you. God bless you. Go to the other side. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shut it off.